there. Okay, got some great responses going on here. So Joni on this one says, I have a strong sense of empathy and desire to seek change for students who are dealing with mental health and anxiety concerns. Afton says, the dearth of people who can or are able Uh, oh, able to connect. Uh, the dearth of people who can or are able to connect with nature in any way, shape, or form, wanting to help people renew our grounding and connection with the earth. It's awesome. And then Tori says, I would love to change how women are treated in Italy. It's a very chauvinist country, and it affects everything from healthcare to work to daily life. Those are so well said. Thank you so much for sharing those. So we're gonna come back to these later. So um, you know, you'll have access to the chat, of course, throughout our session today. So you can come back and look at those when we get towards the end of the session. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take you through, I'm going backwards. <laughs> I'm gonna take you through a little bit deeper into what a chat is all about. So as I mentioned, I sparked a chat. Uh, music studio for youth experiencing homelessness. Um, and it's through an organization called Urban Peak, and that's located here in Denver. And I'll tell you more about that as we get to it. But first, I wanted to give you two other examples of what chats are really all about. And chats have these five elements a part of them. And so the first one is that it's conceptualized, implemented, and managed by the community or the population in question. It's created, it creates employment opportunities for community members. It activates talents for scalability. It has sustainable infrastructures. They offer a place of inspiration and connection for the community members. So let's take a look at each of these and how those five elements of chats show up in each of these examples. I had the pleasure of visiting the Ntusi Resort and Retreat Center in Kabale, Uganda in 2017. And it is a retreat basically for anybody to come stay at and ideate, as it says here, exchange ideas and knowledge. And it was an amazing experience to learn from and meet Jamie Van Leeuwen, who's uh, you can see in this picture here. And he's the one who started and sparked the conversation around this retreat center. And it was actually then the Ugandans, the villagers in this area around Lake Bunyoni in East Africa, who were ultimately imagined this retreat center and then implemented all of the steps to make it happen. And Jamie really just asked the right questions and uh, was able to bring in resources to facilitate that process. And I felt like this is also a very poignant phrase right here um, where it's a sustainable business model, so that sustainable uh, infrastructure. And then it also creates jobs for people of the community. And then also a percentage of that income goes into the community for investment projects. So we can see those factors embodied in that Ntusi resort. The Urban Mosaic Project I uh, thought of this one because two of my former students, I teach at CU Denver, and two of my former students are now involved with this organization. And you can see the key factor here of it develops local leaders. And so this is very different than thinking of being a savior, going into a community and fixing it. Um, instead, it empowers and it accesses the talents of those local leaders and creating social structures that are sustainable. So we see all of that key language right there. And even beyond that, we can see in the organizational goal here that it is scalable. So it's taking the idea, the model, and then making it scalable so that different entities can impact millions, millions of residents in fragile cities around the world. So I'm gonna tell you more into my story about how I sparked the conversation around this studio at Urban Peak. But basically what it is, is it's a day drop-in center and 
specifically serving youth experiencing homelessness and they can come in and they can get wraparound services. Um, but in the midst of that, they can come into the music studio and they can create and they can express their voice for what they want to do through their music, whether that be hip hop or whether that be playing an instrument. And um, there's been a lot of development really sparked by the community itself around that. So I'll go deeper into that story. But first, I wanted to share some of the youth's music with you. So this was recorded at the music studio at Urban Peak. Bob your head to the rhythm that you live in. All you have to do is listen and it's given through upliftment. I encourage you to be different. A beautiful vision, a beautiful lesson. A musical listen, a musical lesson. Every time that I meditate, levitate on a higher level at a best rate. Above the fire devil, I gravitate over the seas. The old to believe and imagination told me to I grow and see. That is useless, but I use it every moment that I'm awake, learning from every mistake. I'm a wonderer, loving the land that is under you, outside with the warmth of the sun hugging you. I okay, so these are examples of the chats themselves and the categories and components that go into them. Next, we'll walk through eight steps to sparking your own chat. And I thought the most effective way to do this and really to illuminate and bring to life each of these steps, I'll just tell you more about the story and, my, and the steps that I took to sparking the chat at Urban Peak with the music studio. So I'm pictured here uh, with Owen Trujillo, who was a student of mine at CU Denver, and he's a hip hop artist. And so he heard that I was just down at Urban Peak uh, volunteering and just starting to bring my guitar. I play acoustic guitar and do kind of almost more folk music type of thing, which uh, was connecting on a more limited level, let's just say, with the youth at Urban Peak and their musical language. And so when he heard that I was doing some music down at Urban Peak, he got interested and wanted to come with me. So I had already identified my personal passions. I had to go into step one here. I had um, gone to college at the University of Southern California, where homelessness is very visible and really juxtaposed against the campus there and the campus community. Um, and I'd even had conversations with people experiencing homelessness and just to seek to understand more about what some of those situations were around why they were either choosing that lifestyle or felt forced into that type of lifestyle. Um, so then when I got to Denver, I had a roommate and this is sort of the networking piece here which is that I just happened to have a roommate who worked for Urban Peak. And I had already been teaching at CU Denver, so he knew that I was involved with um, young adults and so forth. And so he thought that I might, with my curiosity about homelessness and my empathy around hom hope, uh, homelessness, that he thought Urban Peak might be a good fit for me and recommended that I go check it out to volunteer. So then I started connecting with people at Urban Peak. And I asked, listened, and learned about what the community needed. And I actually started teaching an arts and crafts class because that was one of the first needs that they had. And that got me in, introduced to a lot more people in the Urban Peak community. And it wasn't until I'd really integrated there at that area to, that I started to co-create and ideate around music. And so it was around this time that Owen Trujillo, again, pictured in that picture to the left, came with me to the studio, um, or actually just to Urban Peak at that time, because we didn't have a studio yet. And we started to co-create and ideate around, Owen Trujillo brought in a microphone and a laptop, and he like brought this hip hop culture to Urban Peak, and the youth loved it. And it was much more along the lines of what they were used to, and you know they would get together with friends and uh, basically uh, rap off the top of their heads. And so it was a musical, language that they were already very familiar with. So that really got us thinking together. And then we teamed up with Urban Peak uh, to do a small fundraiser at first to get a few pieces of equipment into the studio and create kind of a makeshift studio just to start with. And then that really moved into the next step of activating talents for scalability. So what happened next was because Owen Trujillo is a member of CU Denver, um, and a student at CU Denver started to get involved, then other students started to get involved as well. And they started volunteering at the studio. And then um, one of the associate deans at CU Denver kind of got word of what we were doing and helped me to apply for a grant that then allowed us to create a upgraded studio. We did construction on the studio space. We 
brought in a whole bunch of upgraded equipment. Um, and then we also created a part-time position for a student from CU Denver to actually work and get paid for working at the studio. Um, and then even more recently, there's been somebody else from the CU Denver community who's volunteered to help make a mural for the studio and actually uh, not make it herself as a faculty member at CU Denver, but actually activate the talents again of the community and have the youth uh, do paintings and whatnot that will then be featured in that, um, in that mural. And then recently, so this kind of then falls into this step back category. Um, I've been able to step back more because we got uh, that grant and then also Urban Peak was then empowered to apply for another grant and they got another large grant that's gonna allow that music studio manager position, student at CU Denver to be managing that studio uh, for like an extra year, even beyond the funding that we already have. So it's really just moving into that sustainable infrastructure step. And that's been after like 10 years. So I think that's a key component here is just that these things can take a long time and a lot of investment over a long period of time. Um, but it's really fun to be at that point now where these uh, sustainability of that infrastructure is really starting to be seen. And I'm able to step back and, and really start new conversations. And that's a key component. I, I, I chose that acronym consciously as well because it really is about starting conversations. And that is the element of the spark right there is just starting those conversations with the community and all of the, the cool places that it can go from there. So those are the eight steps and I wanted to invite you into the first three. So the first one is identifying personal passions and skills, which you've already done. And those were the first two questions that we started out with today. So those elements of when you feel the most joyful and alive, and then that second question that we did, which is kind of that desire to seek change area. So the question though that I'd like to ask you to journal a little bit further on right now is where do those intersect? Where could those intersect? So let's take two minutes and just give a little bit of thought to that. And you're welcome to share any of that in the chat. I'd greatly appreciate it if you would, and it would give us stuff to kind of reflect on and see where everybody's at with that. Um, and so we'll go from there. Of course, anything that you wanna keep personal, you're welcome to, uh, but anything that you're willing to share, please do so in the chat when you're ready. So just on number one there so far, responding to that question. Okay, these are beautiful so far. Joni says, or Tori says, I meet, uh, I run a meetup group so I could transform it or create a branch just for women where we meet to try new things together, new restaurants, seeing new exhibitions, concerts, et cetera. Cool idea. 
Joni says, I'm thinking about how theater for young people could be framed to help them manage mental health and anxiety challenges. There are certainly many youth theaters offering classes, but I'm not sure about the with attention to mental health focus. Yeah, awesome. And Tori also followed up and said, and also have women share ways we can help each other. Yeah. Um, Afton says, I'm thinking of the potential of networking with local organizations like Volunteers for Outdoor Colorado, VOC, or the Grow House, learning more about the populations they serve and how to expand and what other projects or services might be needed and how the community thinks about getting into nature to help brainstorm new ideas. So cool. Okay, so then step two is networking. Who are a few community members with whom you could initiate further learning, conversation, or potential involvement? And even if you don't know any community members directly in the area that you've mentioned in your last response, um, maybe think about anybody who would know somebody in that area. Um, so even if it's a level of connection separated or so forth. Um, and even if you can't think of anybody who you know of in any of these areas, then maybe it's even some keywords that could go into like an internet search or something. So um, we're just looking for like a small first step into some conversations here. And you don't have to put those people or their names in the chat, um, but I'll just, let's just take two minutes of silence for you to just write down a couple, jot down a couple of those people that you could reach out to. Our third question is the ask, listen, and learn step. So what are some questions that you'd want to ask these community members? Some examples could be, what is your current understanding of this issue? What troubles or confuses you the most about it? And what are, your more, most, what are you most curious about regarding this issue? So feel free to take a couple of minutes to answer any or all of those questions. And that could give you some interesting Places, places to start when it comes to these conversations with these community members. And if you'd be willing to post any of those questions or responses to those questions in the chat, that'd be wonderful.
These are looking great. Afton on this one says, I'm curious about ways that we can all simplify our lifestyles and encourage more connection with and time in nature. And Tori, I could ask something like, how could your life be better if some of these issues were improved? Or is there any way you could start help, helping people make small changes at home or with your friends and coworkers? Yeah, great questions to start with. And Joni said, I would want to talk with people who work specifically with young people on mental health issues to find out more about what is needed and what is helpful. It would be nice to do this in collaboration with a theater already offering children's theater classes. So I'd also need to find out if one of the theaters I already work with would have an interest in adjusting their classes or a subset of classes. So cool. These are really great. And um, it's awesome to see how the idea is developing. And um, this is probably one of the trickiest spots actually right here at this at the end of this third step, because I know me personally, I, I get really excited about an idea that I have, and I'm not saying that any of you are doing this, but um, it is just a warning at the same time that uh, I get very excited about the ideas that I have and that I want to then just go in and implement in the community and uh, just sort of from a top down standpoint or, or from a, a me out uh, kind of standpoint. And so this is a really good chance to just be reminded that that's very much about asking these kind of questions that you all are coming up with and really um, hearing the community and then just sparking that conversation and, and empowering the community to implement those things that they're thinking for their own community members and to start to create those sustainable structures, really just providing some of those um, resources for the community so that they can enact what they wanna enact. So you are well on your way to sparking your own chats. And I have developed a worksheet that you can refer to and fill out as you walk through each of the steps. Um, and I've actually emailed those out to you and I will follow up with an email afterwards as well. Um, but you can also follow this link because I have and will again email out the slides. Um, but this is basically gonna walk you through those first three steps like we did already, but it also has some additional questions in case you wanna dive a little bit deeper into each of those. And then it also has more stuff under each of the following steps, whether those be other questions to consider or action steps within those. So if anybody has any questions at this time, uh, you're welcome to unmute. I know we've been just kind of doing webinar mode here for the entire time, and but we can, we're can we just a few of us here. So you're welcome to unmute and we can just kind of chat here at the end if you have any questions. Um, but you're also welcome to post any questions you might have right now in the Zoom chat. And also please connect with me on social media, mainly Instagram and Facebook at Owen Courts. No, I just wanted to say thank you. That was very interesting. It, I, it, it's important to have someone guide you through the steps because maybe you have an idea, but then you don't know how to where to go after that. So thank you. Great. That's great to hear. Yeah. Thanks, Tori. And um, yeah, hopefully that's the case for those other steps. Uh, you know that I'm sure having a guide through the whole thing is helpful. Um, but hopefully some of those questions and action steps within some of those later steps are helpful too. Well, I agree with Tori. So I appreciate that very much. And I definitely appreciate having the slides and the um, worksheet. Those types of take takeaways are really helpful. So awesome. thank you. Thanks, Joni. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you all so much. If you have any questions, just feel free to DM me on social media. And um, otherwise, happy sparking. Thank Thanks, you. Thank you very much. Have a great day.